Hello there, Jay Foster again for 66 RPG. I'm here to talk to you about a few of the extra little bits and pieces that you can do with your uh, Google Drive character sheet. So, without further ado, back with Bobby Stevens, the character I created in the last video, you can see um, that he doesn't have any equipment at the moment that has any ammunition. Now, we do have, down the bottom corner over here, follow my mouse where I've clicked, we do have our consumables. Now, at the moment, we've just got some money and then squiggles. So what I'm going to do now is add in an extra bit of equipment that actually requires um, some kind of consumable and show you how the sheet can help you track those kind of things. So just going to use the usual creative cursor for some custom equipment. Should give the creators an orange advantage down the bottom right. There we go. Script finished. Okay, yep, yeah, so now we've got our orange advantages in. Now I'm going to just simply go ahead and grab myself a basic, um, ooh, yeah, got quite a lot of weapons on this list. Uh, I don't think we'll give him an M1A1 tank. Um, let's perhaps just give him a basic 9mm pistol. So it'll go and do its look up things, it's find it. So at the moment, ah, yeah, here we can see. Now in the description at the very end, you'll see the word consumable, and you'll see. We've got a little bit of information here that very much matches up with the bit of information we have over here in the consumables, where we've got our um, arrows, or our, our two chevrons. So what we do to make sure this sheet correctly tracks that we're using some ammunition is we type this bit of information, 9 times 19 millimeters, into the consumables over here. So removing the uh, question marks and typing in exactly as it is with no spaces either side, should give us this, and I'm going to give Bobby, who's found this pistol, a clip of 15 to match up with the capacity. Now, the way this should work is when I now click use on this bit of equipment, so I've now committed to using it, I've got my dependence here. When I now click roll, and it runs its script, ah, yes, you can see. First things first, we've got our dice on here, but the most important thing here is this number down here now has gone down to 14. So the sheet, having now connected the two, has put in that I have used, I fired a round out of my pistol, and thus I now have one less bit of ammunition down here. Now obviously, um, if you've got guns or weapons or equipment that are using the same type of ammunition, uh, it will track down the same time. If you put the same number of ammunition in again, I suspect it will most likely. So if I put nine times nineteen millimeters, the chevron here again, and put in here twenty, so we can clearly see it. It's gone red. I suspect if we use the weapon again, it's not going to distinguish between the two, and it will take one off both, which it has done. So you've only got one supply of every type of consumable ammunition. So if you've got weapons that have things in clips and all the rest of it, you're going to have to afraid to spend a little bit more time keeping track of those yourself. So I'm going to delete those two, and I'm going to rearm Bobby back up to his full 15 in his clip. So, uh, and also restore his potential, because you never know, we might I might need that later. So this um, down here, where we have our pistol, we have our, it tells you what the consumable is. On some of the bits of equipment, the text overruns a little bit and the consumable isn't always immediately available. Now, if you're missing what the consumable is, if you go to Character Equipment tab, you'll see that for every single bit of equipment that has a potential consumable option, you will have down the right hand side uh, of this a complete list of all the consumables. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm going to mention again, do get to make sure you get it accurately, take the text directly out from here um, and copy it across. That will work fine. The important thing to remember is not to put any spaces in where there aren't in the existing ones. So here, 0.44 Magnum, there are no spaces between the chevrons and the 0.44. So that's the thing. Now, the next little bit I'm going to show you is if I want to add an, an extra little bit of equipment for myself. So here I've gone to the GM Custom tab. Now here, I can include um, custom advantages that don't come from the core databases that the sheet is looking for. So we have our custom paths, custom lives, custom abilities, custom character equipment, and custom mundane equipment. Now what I'm going to do at the moment is add in a bit of custom, um, custom mundane equipment, and Bobby's going to have found an alien laser gun. 
which is picked up. The keywords on it, I'm going to add that's got a range of 10 because it's very, very good. Um, that, that'll all do for that. Summary, an alien laser weapon. Hopefully, fully charged. Oh, that's not how you spell charged. And the consumable I'm going to put in here, using the same format, is I'm going to put in, ooh, let's call them cells. Okay, so that's pretty much everything created for this one. So alien laser gun, range 10, bit of summary, and then the consumable's gone in over here. If we now go back to um, Bobby Stevens' character sheet, we can see uh, we can add that in. So I'm going to create a cursor and create a piece of mundane equipment, which is going to drop in here. So Bobby originally um, used that 9mm pistol of his father's, um, and he's done awful things in the name of humanity and has managed to get hold of himself of an alien laser gun. Now, you'll find these at the end of the list under the GM custom tab. So the alien laser gun goes in, it goes and picks up the information that I've got hopefully fully charged. Now what I should be able to do is go over here, add in cells. Bobby's got five energy cells. Now with this I can immediately drop on and show you the next bit of, uh, of interest. So Bobby's not trained how to use an alien laser gun. And there are many situations where a player might try to use a piece of equipment or a bit of scenery in a manner that could be best described as ad hoc, i.e. you are not using it for its intended purpose. You can smash someone up to the side of the head with a frying pan, but that's not exactly what it's designed for. You can try and distract um, or hurt a giant chicken by throwing cake at them, but it's not what it's designed for. So if you're trying to use, for example, say a pistol to... Um, shoot someone with, that's fine. Then, then you're using a bit of equipment correctly. If you're trying to use a bit of equipment um, in the wrong way, for example, attacking someone with a chair in a bar fight, that means that bit of equipment is being used ad hoc. So rather than getting a full 1d6, you only get a 0d6 plus 2. So as I've highlighted down here, under the CP option for mundane equipment, there's the option to use it ad hoc, which I've selected. And you will see it's got the AD tag in here and it's flipped to an Audi 6 plus 2. So just to check, you can also find that under every bit of equipment you've got, there's also the option for using ad hoc. So for example, if Billy was trying to use his 9mm pistol for something it wasn't intended to, or if somebody was trying, he was trying to use his smartphone to wedge open a door, it's not really what it's intended for, so it's an ad hoc use. So Billy is just trying to, is unfortunately has absolutely no training or any idea how to use his laser gun. So I'm declaring that he's making it it's ad hoc. So it doesn't actually affect the way you use it. You simply select use. Um, it goes in here. See, it's already used. We've already committed the potential. You see, we're only getting an d 6 plus 2 on it. It basically means the only thing Billy's going to get out of this is a, a plus 2 um, because it is that useful. So just for the sake of increasing this thing, I'm going to have that he's aiming down it and he's using his sharp eyes. Um, and then I'm going to roll. So I've committed two potential. I'm only getting 1d6 plus 3. I've got a result of 9. And you can see immediately that even though this is a custom created item, because I've correctly told um, the sheet to look for cells as a consumable and cells on a card that I'm advantage that I'm using, um, Billy's been able to fire off the laser weapon with the result of 9, which has certainly scared his neighbor's cat. Um, but he's managed to, he hasn't correctly used one of his cells. So. What have I shown you uh, for this short little video? I've shown you how you can use our Google Sheet to track your consumables. Um, as long as something has the consumable tag in the text, you can um, attach it uh, over to a consumables tracker here, and it will keep track of what you've got. I've shown you how you can create custom items using um, specifically how to create a custom bit of equipment, but we can also create custom paths um, so by filling in the relevant information to match what you've got in the uh, standard path database. I've also shown you how to use ad hoc um, bits of uh, equipment. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any more questions on the creation of custom paths, uh, please comment in this video or where you've seen this video posted. And if there's a demand, I will go ahead and create the tutorial where I create a complete custom path. The system isn't necessarily designed for inputting a lot of stuff via the GM custom. It's mostly meant, the GM custom section is mostly meant for adding in a few little bits of um, 
tip bits and extra advantages that are very specific to the adventure you're running on that occasion. So thank you very much for watching. I've been James Foster for City 6. And